and it should be ready to go. All right, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. Excellent. And then, so we have like a few things on our radar today. We have Vinyaski, the Duke Continuum. When do you play this one again? When? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, probably like February, January. Okay. All right. Like next year? So okay. you have a bit of time there. Uh, how's the the trickier sections with the octaves and everything going? <coughs> no comment. <laughs> okay. Uh, then oh, I'm also doing Chico and Primo or something. Okay, great. Uh, okay, so I'm just trying to think of like the next step for you. Uh, why don't we record through the um, Vinyasi since we have the camera? And uh, oh, sure. it gives you sort of a framework to be able to mm -hmm. okay. see how it all goes. Okay, go for it.
you have this all on tape, so you can like sort of dissect mm. a little bit some of the things because it's already like in good shape. You can get through it, and you can probably play it through with piano and like a setting that uh, makes you feel like you can survive. But we want you to thrive, right? Yeah. And just make sure that everything feels really good. So it's always important for us to like always go to the places that we feel least comfortable. So my job here is just to help you practice or how to practice it and then give you some musical ideas along the way. Sound good? Okay, let's do it. So um, tell me a spot that feels uncomfortable throughout this entire piece. Mm -hmm. First spot is mm -hmm. the sucky section. Mm -hmm. It's like stuck. What do you mean by stuck? You know, like the string crossing or like, mm -hmm. not like it just can't make it sound really like Okay, so is that a left hand issue or do you think it's a right hand issue? Right hand issue. Yeah, so it's a huge right hand issue. So I think the first thing is just understanding sort of like what goes into a nice sound. Like what type of like, if you were to do like a sort of sound like, oh, sorry. How would that look just in open string wise? So you just do something like that. to you? Mm -hmm. Try it again. Nice! So like you have like a nice tranquilo sound is what it says here. Now think about where the string crossings actually lie when we're going... You just try that with the... Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Just do the D string. And then, can you get that type of sound, uh, but make sure that you're distributing because you're probably gonna need a bit more bow for the rest of it. So maybe up until like the first third. Yeah, okay. Now let's see what's next. So, on the A string. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay, so let's try it like this. Sorry. Last one is. Oh, none. Mm -hmm. I think you could probably you could probably use all the way to the tip of the bow. Yeah. So utilize as much of the bow as you need. Now, can you try the entire thing? So you could hear the string crossing was a little bit uh, Do you think you're giving yourself enough bow towards no. the E string? Try it again. Hmm? So now can you try this entire exercise looking at the sounding point of your instrument and just making sure that you feel like you're in a good spot in the bow. See if you can put it together. Mm -hmm. So there's one left hand glitch. You're going, uh, are you extending back or shifting back? Okay. Can you try extending? I think it's the A string part of it that's the hardest. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, and continually look at your signing point because as you do the string crossings, your signing point changes as well. See if you can keep it a bit more constant. Okay, now let's check out the next part. 
Try it just the... you have to cross right there. Just try that. Mm -hmm. You'll probably get close to the frog, right? Mm -hmm. You lose a little bit of contact um, that right here. Try to connect the F sharp and the oh, sorry, F natural. One more time for yeah. Uh, one more time for intonation. Huh? Mm -hmm. Cross. Okay, let's go on. Because it has less rosin on it. Yeah, and I'll take this one. I'm just curious. <laughs> okay. Oh. See if it's the Wait, instrument's where? fault. From. Try it. Yeah. 
So as you listen to the, yourself in the recording, it's like all those like small details that are going to be the big difference for you. Teacher always used to say that it's like first 95% of it takes us long to learn at the last 5%. It's like really just like taking a fine tuner to like everything that you're doing with your bow and being hypercritical. It's always helpful to listen to yourself too because then you'll be able to like sort of oh pencil things in whenever things things don't feel really good. Okay. All right. So that's sort of like the method I would use. Uh, same thing here. Can we just try that? Uh, right here. Yeah, so it's all about using your bow, right? sound when it's slow it's gonna be even harder when it's like in a fast tempo because what you want is the audience to hear every single note part of the virtuosity part of it it's like all about being faithful to the notes that are being presented and then like share that with other people okay great what's another spot um Okay, so this entire section, um, this right here. If you were to design a warm up for any of these sections, like. even further give yourself like a tempo to gravitate towards so like even half notes would be great so like two one two try that i'll play the top one with you as you open your case, you're like completely cold, it's like, okay. Mm. 
my suggestion as well is hit the third finger first and then hit the fourth afterwards. <laughs> Turn thing with both notes, and in order to keep it interesting for you psychologically, so see if you can do it with some type of musicality. So uh, instead of like just like think where the line is going. Oh, it resolves, and then bit raw. You're like where is this going? Minor. Can you try it like that? So we're in major fa. A bit slower, so take your time. And resolve major. Sort of like when you open up a car and like you're trying to fix something. Also, isn't there like a thing where like if you play like this stuff or something, it helps? When you play what? Like uh, there's like this teacher and she said that like playing like it with expression also helps. Yeah, exactly. In fact, like it's amazing how like when the brain learns, half of it is like the emotional part of it too. You can't separate it. If you're like too clinical and cold, like when you're actually playing it in context, it might actually go more out of tune because you're not feeling it in a way that you're practiced as well. So doing it slow and practicing sort of like the character and the feelings uh, is just as important as like playing the notes uh, in that time. And it's more interesting like that too, which is helpful. Okay, so that would be like a great exercise for you to do at the very beginning as well, right? So you have like all these like... You'll see them in the video, right? And then... that several times and then the a few times okay uh, what else oh um this mm -hmm. oh, is the same thing yeah so that's the same stuff that we were working on have you been warming up like okay so that's just a continual thing and like try to do, let's try this in a slightly uncomfortable tempo. So it's not like so stable that you're like four, but like maybe. Yeah. Okay, so let's just stop there. So what did you feel like you can like repeat in a way? Stretch. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can you repeat that interval? Is that more? Just that. So you're going down. And then what? Oh, sorry, try it again. Gotcha, okay. So you are what, it's like when people say that you are what you eat, it's like you will sound like how you practice, right? So the more that you repeat the tiny details, the more people will say, oh, you're paying attention to like just... Let's try that a few times. And you're like, 
like, oh, I can't, I don't have time, but you do have time. So just take your time into them. I don't think anyone's going to be, uh, how can I say, it? disappointed that you're pulling in a little bit, just because it is a very stretchy spot, spot already. Okay, can we try it uh, from B? Just... Can you vibrate these? So you have enough to go on, I think, with all of this. Um, why don't we do a passage of Sibelius concerto? How's the cadenza going? Um, I don't know. It's okay. Like, it's like. Uh, what did you work on? Like in general. Mm -hmm. Like everything. Okay. Tell me one thing you've worked on. The sixteenth stuff. Like which sixteenth? Like all of them. Okay, here, let's go with this this Okay. Well, they're not sixteenths, but like Yeah. I let's guess hear. I got those mixed up. Okay. So what are you working on when you're doing this? Is it like the speed? Is I don't it like, know, just the, like the rhythm? Mostly like the the song. Intonation? No, like I would like. It's almost like you know when you like go downstairs too fast and you like stumble or like like kind of because you're going too fast. So pacing. Yeah. Sure. Okay, great. Can we try the run? Actually, let's go fifty-four right there. So in terms of pacing, I think that, uh, and we'll get to that for a sec, so by the time that you get to the bottom of this chord, if you can set on the A minor, sit on the A first. I think that'll make a difference. Can we try this? Okay, now, getting from there. Now, a bit less bow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the tricky part because you have to distribute your bow in the right it's way. It's all sounds like I'm like... Mm -hmm. It sounds like I'm doing that. You're not like... It's because it's also like a weird set of string crossings. So can we press with that just like this? Right? Two on each. So it should feel... Yeah. Can you just do this a little So 
So if you're gonna always do the bowing in the rhythm of the left hand, so. that as you need. Okay, so that's a good spot to do. Um, did you find a time to work on this? Yes. Yeah, that's also a tricky section too. You want to try, try that? It's hard to do it and like do the crescendo. Yeah. Practice just the dynamics. So you're going to be at a piano there. And then what's next? Piano, crescendo. Right there. You have the crescendo going into the uh, G sharp. So can we try this? This crescendo. So more, most balls towards the tip. because it's going towards the frog as well, right? Yeah, and then... Uh -huh. And give yourself some time because it's a little bit... Yeah. Take a look very quickly at that one. Mm -hmm. It's hard to hear, right? So this is what I want to do. Let's. Um, I'll play the bottom, and you play the top. So I'll go. Okay. You go. Mm. See if you can put it together. Yeah, and you'll hear, you'll hear it on the um, on the recording. You can use the open A. I oh, it's oh, it's open. go down to the A string. So I actually go down to first position because then I can hear the F sharp. And then two four. Yeah. Two four. Yeah. And it's a bit more expressive. Yeah. I think you're able to do it. So this is what you 
you can do. Just practice. So we go almost like that. Yeah, exactly. And this crash eight. Yes. And then do the third finger. Yeah, and it's just always third. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Try not to just Okay. Yeah. So there's some stuff here. Why don't we focus on this next week? And then we can go from there, like on uh, Wednesday, okay? And then I'll so share the video with you. It's gonna be a large file. Oh, okay. So I'll put it on like an unlisted YouTube link and then we'll go from there. Okay? And then maybe what you can do is like an assignment, just like go through with your score, things you wanna work on in terms of a plan, and you can share that with me in our next lesson.